In this episode, we're talking about how to attract wealth effortlessly. Let's find out. Welcome, welcome. This is Girl Khan, your Money Mindset expert. And I am back with another enlightened episode of Money Mindset with Girl Khan, where we deep dive into mindset and energy tools that help you attract abundance effortlessly. Now, I'm your host, Girl Khan, as you know, and today we're talking about one of the most powerful concepts that I've come across in my life and it has changed my life drastically. And in, in the words of wealth creation, it's it's manifesting abundance, right? And this is the most important topic that I talk about, hence the name Money Mindset. But I've been talking about this for the last eight years, I would say, and it's transformed my life because I've been implementing the, tra- uh, the strategies into my own life and that into my clients as well. And I know for a fact these strategies work. They haven't worked for one person, but multiple people, including myself, yours truly, okay? So how can you attract wealth effortlessly? Let's dive in, okay? So before I get talking about what and how to manifest, let's really define what we, you know, what um, what manifesting abundance really means. So what does a... a <sighs> What does attracting abundance truly mean to you? Manifesting abundance for me is a process beginning with your desires. And it's that process which takes your desires into from the spiritual world into your physical 3D world. So it's the it's a process where through the power of your thoughts, truly your thoughts and emotions and actions, you can actually transform your desires from uh, an, an image, uh, something that's in the spiritual world into your physical world, okay? So when we talk about abundance, we're not just talking, referring to the financial wealth. We're, we're talking about a state of plentiness. We're talking about a state of abundance. We are talking about a state of abundance in all areas of your life, be it your relationships, be it your health, be it your happiness, be it, it, you know, be it in your, in your you know, intimate life, and of course, money okay so when i want abundance for you i want abundance in all areas of your life having just financial abundance is not enough and i truly believe you cannot have abundance in your relationships in your in your health especially if you're living in in the western world you know uk us and so forth in a western which is a materialistic world and live a fulfilled life without having abundance of money because it will impact your health it will impact the kind of food you eat it will impact the kind of place you live and it'll it will impact your choices let's say that okay so then how you know what's the key to manifesting i truly believe the key to manifesting abundance starts with your mindset hence i always talk about mindset and the name of this podcast is my money mindset as well i believe that it's crucial for you to believe that you are worthy of wealth, that you are capable of achieving it, that this belief becomes a foundation of everything that makes you who you are. It's not just something that you verbalize and you articulate now and again. It just becomes a core element of your paradigm. It becomes so ingrained in your energy. And you can do that by using manifesting tools, but it has to be ingrained in your psyche. So the question then we're going to raise is, how do we cultivate this kind of mindset? How do we ingrain this belief that you're worthy of abundance, you're worthy of abundance in not just one area, but all areas of your life, you know, you're capable of, of achieving anything. How do we bring that into your physical world? How do you bring that into your physical body? How do we bring that into your psyche? So in today's episode, I'm going to give you a few steps, which you may have heard before, but I I think repetition is the mother of all uh, all, all scales. So so therefore, it's important for you to maybe hear this again and maybe hear it in the way I've described it to you now. And therefore, you're able to really internalize the message that's being said to you or being heard by you right now. And I just just a little side note here. I don't believe anything happens for a a coincidence. If you are listening to this podcast episode right now, either watching on YouTube or listening to us on one of the podcast platforms, 
the universe is making you hear these words right now. So if you're listening to them, they're there for you and they're probably there as a reminder or if you're not familiar with them, then there are messages using me as a medium that the universe is trying to get to you, okay? So just, just a side note there. All right, so let's go through very quickly what are the steps. Step number one, you need to have clarity, right? So I always go back to the the being being British. We you know we're big football fans here. Soccer, by the way, for those of you who <laughs> live in America. So we, you know, really believe that if you want to get to a goal, you need to know where the goalposts are, right? So this is a really, really brilliant metaphor to apply, to to put into your own life. How do you know what you want? Or how do you know you've achieved what you want if you don't have clarity around it, right? So you need to have clarity and, and clarity and intention. So the first step would be for you to become crystal clear in your mind. And you can use pen and paper for this as to what it is that you want to manifest. And I always say, do this process on your own and give yourself permission to ask for anything, desire anything. It could be anything. And I'm talking from personal experience here at the moment, because a lot of the times we may give us ourselves permission in one area of your life. Okay, I can have the best health, or I can have the best body, or I can have whatever. We tend to, as humans, think, oh, I can't have all. We can't, I can't have my cake and eat it. Well, that's a phrase that I've been heard, I've heard so often. So we don't allow ourselves to even ask for things in all areas. So do this exercise if you're listening to me right now. Maybe pause me for a minute, get a pen and paper out, and actually give yourself permission to write out everything that you want. You can put the headings, my personal romantic life, my friendships, my work colleagues, my business, my health, my sexual relationship, everything. Put headings and then put down what you truly desire and give yourself permission to just think big, think whatever you want. And this is important because whatever you put on that paper is what you're giving yourself permission to ask at this moment in time. And your manifestations will never exceed those. That's very important to remember. Okay, so that is going to be your, your foundation, right? So here's the thing, you need to know how, so let's focus on money because that's my full time. So when it comes to your money, write down your financial goals in detail. Write down how much money you want to be making, how much money do you want to have in your, example, in UK we have such things called ISAs. So these are tax-free investments that we, we put in, 20, we can do 20,000 every year at the moment. Um, so in your saving, your high-end savings, in your uh, retirement fund, which for us is our pension you can have, in your, um, I don't know, your your whatever investments you have in cryptocurrencies, in, in real estate, whatever may be. I mean, everyone's individual, so everyone's different. So everyone has different ideas of what's good for them. Be very clear and, and write about it. How many houses do you want? What kind of income do you want on a, on a monthly or annual basis? When do you want to not have to work retirement? I don't believe in retirement, to be honest, but you have to aim for a point in life when you no longer have to work and you have all the money that you need to be able to maintain your lifestyle till the day you die. You can continue to work. And I I have an, an age in mind that I want to get that to. But you could you can maintain your lifestyle without compromising on anything, yet you no longer have to work ever for a single day in your life. Yeah. So think like that. You need to set a strong intention about when you, what you desire and also when do you want to achieve this by. Now, keep in mind, the, the date does not have to be set in stone, but you have to have something that you're working towards. I know some people say, oh, we shouldn't put dates down. We should think about it now. You are when you, the next, when I do the next step, you're going to think in that state of now, but you do need to have a date that you're working towards. And why, and I think that's very important. Otherwise, I don't believe that you are as as effective in terms of taking um, taking the action, which is one of the steps further down. Okay, so do that. Step number one: get clarity and about what you want, and have the intention of manifesting it, and get that down on a piece of paper. And having it in mind is not enough. Writing piece of paper, and then I would add in the the date by which you want it. 
Okay, so you're going to set a strong intention that what you desire and it's it's already on its way, but it's it, there's a process where it goes from the spiritual into the physical. So it has to go from the spiritual world into the physical world. And that trans, well, you call it transitional or transformation takes some time. It could be a few months. It could be even a couple of years. Who knows, right? You don't have control over that to some extent. But it's that desire. And the stronger the desire, the stronger the emotions you attach to, which I'm going to do go into next step two, the faster that process becomes. So if you don't desire something as, as rapidly, it will take a long process to achieve. If you really focus on something, it will be faster for you to achieve. Okay, so go with that. Step number two, visualization. Right, so visualization is a powerful tool. You probably already have heard of it. If you haven't, then you, this is very important for you to understand. Visualization is a very powerful manifesting tool. You need to spend every day a few minutes a day not the whole entire day you, know, you have to spend hours and hours doing affirmations and visualizations i don't really believe in that i think that the steps later on are, are equally important but you do need to spend some time visualizing what it is that you want okay every single day it could be a few minutes it could be five it could be ten it doesn't really matter but you have to spend a certain amount of time visualizing your goals you really you really do and not only do you think about your goals, but you have to visualize it as if you've already achieved it. So I always talk about seeing it in the past. So it's like imagining, for example, if you want to be earning £100,000 or dollars a month, that's your income tar target, that's one of your goals. You need to be thinking uh, from a few months after you've already started achieving this and you're looking back in your life and seeing how easy it was for you to start hitting the £100,000 a month goal. It was just so easy. It was easy. It was easy. It was easy. And, you know, see your life as it would be with the £100,000 coming or dollars coming every month, okay? So it has to be done. It's quite important that you, have, you do that. And you also need to immerse yourself in the experience. It's not just seeing yourself and, and visualising. A lot of people say, oh, I do visualization and I do this and I think about it. But I always say, Where's, where are the emotions? You have to feel the feelings that you would feel when you are, have achieved it. If this is one of your lifelong goals, how do you feel about it when you've achieved it? So you need to be able to celebrate this when it happens. So how are you celebrating? How are you feeling? How, what are you doing? How is your life different? Feel those emotions. Okay, you really need to really immerse yourself in the experience and feel those emotions. This practice aligns your energy with the frequency of abundance because the more you emotionalize and really feel into the to the feeling of having that whatever desire it is, the money, the car, the house, the whatever, the, the, the stronger the emotional connection you have with that desire, the faster it will show up for you in your physical 3G world, okay? So that's step number two. Step number three. What is step number three? Step number three is affirmations. Now, I'm not that big a bigger person on affirmations, but I do believe affirmations do have a role to play. They're not the be end all of, of the manifestation process, but they do have a role to play. And you do need to, I prefer to write my own and I would encourage you to do so. You can take some which, you know, I'll give you in a bit, like, money flows into my life easily and effortlessly. There's one that I've taken from Bob Proctor from years back, and that's money comes to me through multiple sources in increasing quantity on a continuous basis. That is from Bob Proctor, and I, I, I love that affirmation, so I pass that on to everybody. But generally, it's, the if you, if you make an affirmation that you've written yourself with the words that resonate with you, that is the highest level of affirmation you can do. Taking affirmations written by someone else doesn't necessarily do that much for you because you may not be emotionalized to those words. How we speak, I mean, how we speak in UK is very different from how we speak in America or Australia. So a, a sentence said by me here can resonate with people in the UK. Even there, you know, the, how we speak in London is very different from how we speak in Edinburgh. So when you write these these affirmations in the words that you are have meaning to you, which are close to your heart, which are in alignment with your energy, because remember, all everything, including words, have energy, then those affirmations are more powerful. 
So I would encourage you to write your own affirmations. You can have the ones I've given as, as a base point, but I would highly encourage you to take some affirmations or take some affirmations and turn them into your own words. You can do that too. Okay, so I want you to see these affirmations daily to reprogram your subconscious mind. And the best time to do these affirmations is first thing in the morning and last thing at night. So first thing in the morning, you've just gotten up. You can do, you can, you, the, one of the one things I teach my clients is you can write some of these or your life purpose or one or two of these, which are really, really important to you on a piece of paper, have an extra bed when, in the morning when you wake up, pick it up and read it out. That's probably the easiest way. But if you have a list of affirmations you want to go through, then pick that list and take it to the bathroom and read it out, right? In the mirror. I think that's the best way. I, I love mirror work, so that's probably the best way. And then in the evening, you can repeat the same, repeat it in the mirror and then come back to sleep. Or you can just before you fall off asleep in your bed, when well, you've got the duvet on or, you know, whatever, pick up the piece of, pick up the card or whatever and read it out to yourself just before you fall asleep and just have that in your mind as you're falling asleep. That's the best time to reprogram your subconscious mind. Okay. Step number four is gratitude. I'm really big on gratitude. I really... I really believe that we need to be grateful for so much in our life and we live in a perpetual state of ingratitude, whereas we need to stay, be in a constant state of gratitude. I went for a walk this afternoon, or early evening rather, and it was a beautiful summer evening here in London. And I live in a very, very, very nice part of London, in the outer London anyway. And there's lots of greenery. And I walked down and there are really nice houses, very, very big houses around her. And, and I just, I was taking in the beauty, the, the magnificent homes, the cars, the people. The, and it's very quiet. So the peace around me and my, I was trying to put, listen to a, an audio book. But my, for some reason, my, 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 my earbuds weren't really working. So I took it as a sign from the universe, like, leave it, go with the peace. And I just started looking around, started taking in the beauty all around me. And I just was at peace. My life is not great. It has, well, my life is great. Let me rephrase that. My life is great. There are aspects of my life which are not great at the moment. And I'm not the only one. I don't know anybody who I know intimately, who I know really, really uh, well, whose life I would say is perfect. Every one of us is battling demons, which most vast majority of people don't know about. You only, you would only know about them if you are close to the individual. So from the outset, no one can guess the turmoil I'm going through at the moment. But people close to me know that this is probably one of the hardest times in my life. Yet I'm, I'm perfectly at peace. I don't want to show ingratitude for everything else in my life because some parts of my life are not going according to my plan. They're, go they're, they're going well according to divine plan, but not my plan. And therefore, should I negate all the other benefits that you know, divine knowledge has given me, including an amazing health that I have? So, no. So I, even the fact that I was able to go out for a walk and I had, I'm healthy and, and, and alive to be able to go and see God's beauty in or everything that was around me, I was grateful for that. So then I started saying all my gratitude for everything around me, for what's happening to me, to the point where I got to the point where I was even grateful for the things which are not to my liking in my life. Because you know what? Those things are not to my liking. But if universe is in control, if Allah subhanahu wa is in control, if God's in control, then they're happening according to divine wisdom, which means they're for my highest good. They may not be to my liking, to my lower self, to my human self, but they're happening for they are happening for me, for my highest good, and therefore, I showed gratitude for even for that, and that's sometimes very difficult to get to, you know, even for myself, I've trained myself to see gratitude, be gratitude, you know, being in a state of gratitude regardless of what happens around me, but there are times when I even fall off the wagon. There are times I I, I need some spiritual help to get back on track. Um, it doesn't take me long because of the, the training I've done, but I'm just telling you, I'm sharing with you how human I am. And it's normal for you to feel a little bit upset and a little bit of, of victim mode, but don't stay in that mode. Cry it, feel the emotions, cry it out, 
I'd do a lot of crying, cry it out, and then get back on track and get back into the state of gratitude. So I just want to share that. I really do believe gratitude is a game changer. It really has been in my life and I highly recommend it to you. I do recommend if you don't have a gratitude journal, then start one today. Just any old book would be fine, but get a gratitude book and start writing out two, three things that you're grateful for every single day. And you'll soon see that list starts to expand and expand. And I have a little tip here for you. The way I do mine is I write out the things I'm really grateful for. Then I write out things that I'm I'm grateful for, but obviously they come under the under the pecking order because the first one would be my kids and my home and my health and my cat and my brother and so forth. So I put all those things first and then it becomes my, my car and my business and so forth. And then the third layer is I show gratitude for things that have yet to happen. I'm manifesting those. I'm in the process of doing that. But I'm showing gratitude to divine synergy because if I have desire for it, and if I'm working towards it, then it's a given fact that's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. I have to have faith that divine synergy is going to bring those things to me. If I've asked for it, if I've prayed for it, it's on its way to me. It's just a matter of time. So then I start showing gratitude for that too. Okay. That's a wonderful, wonderful place to be. And this is my recommendation to you. So by crass, by, by, you can get to that level if you're not there yet. Start with expressing gratitude for what you already have. And I promise you, it doesn't matter where you are, you have things to be grateful for. By expressing gratitude for what you already have, you will open the door for, for the universe, to, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for God to give you more blessings, for more blessings to come into your life. And it's that focus, right? So when we focus on the negative, more negative shows up because we become more aware of it. When you focus on the positive, more positive shows up because two things, not only because there is, you know, we become more aware of it, but also because more positive is attracted to us, right? It works, really, really does work in that way. So keep your gratitude journal and write down at least three things, like I said. And uh, this practice should eventually, in, in a very short matter of time, but it will take a little bit of time, but it's a, it's a process. It will start to shift your, your, your mindset from a state of lack to a state of abundance because you always have something to be grateful for. And the very fact that you're listening to this podcast, you're breathing, you're alive, you've got things to be grateful for. There's so much. We are, I honestly think we in the Western world live in such entitled states. We feel entitled to have clean water. We feel entitled to have, you know, uh, plumbing. We feel entitled to have, you know, fridge full of food which we throw away because we don't even finish it. We feel entitled to have you know, electricity 24-7. There, there are parts in the world even now who don't have electricity 24-7. When I go to Pakistan, they they have, you know, electricity stops for a few hours because they don't produce enough, so they have to stop. We have so much in this life, in this world, and we show, you know, ingratitude. We don't appreciate it. So it's a great place to be, and it's a great way to start showing gratitude to the universe for everything that you've been given without even asking, okay? So that's that. Right. Okay, the next step now is really important. Now, a lot of people who teach and go about doing the law of attraction miss this step completely. For some reason, when the book came, the film came out, The Secret, back I think it's in 2007, 2008, something along those lines. When that book came out, it gave people this false notion that you can just visualize and think about something that you want and the universe, this genie is going to pop out, this, this, you know, the universe... And it's going to give you whatever you want, right? That's a falsity. That doesn't happen, right? It also doesn't mean that you have to work really, really hard for everything you desire. That's not what I'm saying. But uh, the idea that you can sit in a room, chant affirmations all day and have something fall into your lap is a false notion. That's not what's going to happen. So the next step is really, really important. You really have to take action. Now, I don't want you to be a busy bee. I don't want you to be very busy and no productive, okay? You need to be productive so when i say productive i mean you need to take inspired action right manifesting abundance isn't just about thinking and feeling it's about taking inspired action when opportunities arise and they will you need to seize them when you feel a nudge to go and see someone or to follow a certain step do it follow it the universe responds to your energy and actions and therefore, when you are moving in, in alignment with your goals, opportunities will be brought your way. People will be brought into your, into your awareness. 
And you just have to take the action required to build that process along, okay? This idea that it's going to fall into your lap is a falsity because the universe works with its pre-existing laws. The universe will not change its laws just so that you can be happy and be satisfied and realize, oh, yes, this works. It doesn't do that, right? You're too small for the universe to change its laws. But you're, you're amazing and your spirit is wonderful and big. It can give you all the tools and all the insights and all the inspiration you possibly need to be able to bring into your physical world everything you possibly desire that's already there in your spiritual world, okay? So here's the proviso for that. So take inspired action. And lastly, now this is where I think when people even take inspired action, they then are unable to do this last step, which is have faith, trust, and let it go. So a lot of people would start through the process and go through the process that I'm just describing, but would then be like, why isn't it here yet? Why isn't it here yet? Why isn't it here yet? Are we there? It's like a kid, like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? You really need to have faith. You need to trust the process and allow the universe to take charge and do whatever it needs to do. You cannot dictate whether it's going to take two days, two months, or two years. You just have to have faith that you've done everything you possibly can, and now everything's going to work out in the best way possible. You need to trust the universe that, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or God, whoever you want to call, you need to trust that they have heard your plight, they've seen you take inspired action, they know of your desires, and now... They are working to bring your desires into your physical 3D world. It's a process. It's happening. It's happening right now. You may not be able to see it, but it's happening. If I give you an example of a seed, when you plant a seed into the ground, there's lots of darkness around it, and you may not see anything coming up for a while. But underneath all the darkness, the roots shoot out, right? The roots come out first. But if you d dig up, and a lot of people do this, and they dig the the to see if you know is is anything happening, is a seed actually going to germinating? We well, just kill the seed, right? You just kill the process, and a lot of people do that. You have to have faith the same way that a farmer does. That once he's planted, he or she rather has planted those seeds. Those seeds will germinate, and those things, you know, they will their harvest is coming the year after. So, you have to trust that process. You have to really let go of your attachment to the outcome. This is probably the most hardest thing for you to do, but it needs to be done. And you need to allow the process to unfold naturally, right? It's like the flower. You need, if you watch a flower, it looks like it's not moving, but you know the flower eventually opens up and it fully blooms, but you're trying to force it, you kill the flower. Now, holding on to your goals and desires and looking at you know has things moved have things happened yet too tightly can create resistance and this is the one thing that i know for a fact will block your abundance people will come to me and say well law of protection doesn't work well it doesn't work for me and i've tried the whole process and it doesn't work this is when i sort of tell them why haven't you let it go how why haven't you trusted the process what's causing the resistance now I know that it's a lot of the time it's your blocks, your money blocks, which are causing this resistance and which is stopping you from letting go. Hence, we do a lot of energy clearings. And by the way, if you're interested in doing a live energy clearing with me, we do one every month in our school community. You'll get the link for that in the podcast note, in the show notes for the podcast. Or if you're watching from YouTube, then it'll be in the description section as well. There's a link for you to come and join our free community on in school. S K O O L. It's um, it's a it's a brilliant community where we have, and we do energy clearings there. So join one of those energy clearings, and you'll get to experience yourself what it is to get rid of these these blocks, these which are holding you back, which are causing the resistance. And anyway, bringing this back to here, you need to allow the universe to do what it needs to do, and sometimes it looks like nothing's happening. Actually, a lot of the time it looks like nothing's happening because things are happening in the dark, in, in the background, and you have no idea or no evidence to prove that that's happening. This is when you have to have faith. You have to trust the process, allow the universe, allow God to do what only they can do to allow you to have everything that you desire, right? 
Okay, so that's that's the whole process. I hope you enjoyed it. So to wrap this up, manifesting abundance is about aligning your mindset, emotions, and actions with the frequency of wealth. Keep that in mind. That's the whole, that's what all manifesting means. And remember, you are a really, really, really powerful creator. You are capable of attracting any amount of money. I mean, if you have desire for it, it means you're capable of bringing it into your physical 3D world, right? If you really have a true desire, not just because you're, oh yeah, it'd be nice to have a, a trillion dollars. That's not what I'm talking about. If you desire, I want to be a billionaire, I want to be, I want to have 100 million, whatever desire that you have, as long as you have a true desire, you have the capability of bringing that into your physical 3D world. So you have, you are capable of attracting everything you possibly desire. But start with these steps and stay consistent. Doing it for one or two days or a week or a month is not enough. You have to consistently follow through these steps every single day until that desire becomes your reality. And then watch how your financial reality transforms. But thank you so much for joining me today on today's episode, Money Mindset with Gokhan. If you found this episode valuable, please do subscribe and leave a review for us. And do share it with someone who you think could benefit from this message. I do believe I'm channeling these messages. And if this message has found you, it's for you. But it could also be where you are going to be the medium for it to go someone else. If you find this valuable, please do share it with someone who you think can really hear this, can really do with this. And um, thank you so much. Well, until the next time we meet and um, keep believing, keep visualizing, keep manifesting your abundant life. Take care and stay blessed.